Milwaukee. Spanning from our scenic views to the boisterous ball games, we take joy in living here. But beneath the vibrant festivals and joyous atmosphere lies a widely neglected and spiraling crisis, the opioid epidemic. Breaking news now from the north side, the Milwaukee medical examiner says a four-year-old who died last week likely died of an opioid overdose. Mm. Tyran Beckless was found near 26th in Melvina Saturday. The medical examiner says he is the seventh child under the age of five to die of an opioid overdose in Milwaukee County inside of a year and a half. Uh, this is a, a serious public health threat, one of the most serious facing not just Milwaukee and Milwaukee County, but our country. Claiming lives indiscriminately, this deadly epidemic spans across race, gender, and socioeconomic status. In 2018, opioid overdoses claimed nearly one life every single day, and 2019 was even worse, killing more than homicides and car accidents combined. And yet, despite this crisis being the leading cause of non-natural deaths in our city, and despite living here my entire life, I was completely oblivious to this epidemic. By pure coincidence, I came across a radio talk discussing trends in the opioid epidemic. Intrigued, terrified, and confused, I took to the internet to figure out more about what was going on in our city. What I found truly shocked me. Many of these deadly drugs are not just lethal, they're legal. I had no idea where this epidemic came from, or really what an opioid even was. So let's clear that up. Opioids are a family of drugs that act on the body's opioid receptors, which are located throughout our nervous system. When an opioid binds to this receptor, the nerve cell no longer sends pain signals to the brain. Doctors discovered this a few decades ago and began prescribing opioids as painkillers following a physical trauma, for example, breaking a bone but they didn't fully understand how these pills would affect the body over longer periods of time. I look at the article in the New England Journal of Medicine back in the late 80s and it said, based on a short study, where they said these are not addictive. That held a lot of weight with a lot of people and I think the drug companies took it and ran with it. There was not a lot of science behind that at all. And unfortunately, a lot of lives have been claimed as a result of that. Although initial studies concluded that opioids are not addictive, this has since been proven to be simply incorrect. In fact, opioids are incredibly addictive, physically and mentally. Opioids do not cure pain. They just mask it. And as soon as those opioids detach from their receptors, the nerves start shooting pain signals once again, at which point the only solution is to take more pills. So even the legally prescribed painkillers, for example, oxycodone, are incredibly and physically addictive. So there's the people who are prescribed something, but then there's also those who experiment, um, teens in particular. Not only do opioids inhibit pain signals, they also stimulate the release of large amounts of dopamine, a feel-good chemical in the brain. That release of dopamine is exactly what addicts chase. Nobody said you're going to use and it's going to be fun. Nobody told me that. And it was fun. I mean, that's why I did it. Um, several times I was um, pulled out of school for being intoxicated. I think by the time I was a junior, my junior year, my junior summer year um, was the first time I experimented with needles. But over time, more opioid receptors are created and less dopamine is released. And suddenly it's not about getting high. It's about getting by. It's stressful and it's disgusting and it's dirty and it makes you feel empty and alone. People will go in, break their own arm to get pain medicine. Opioid addiction can be physically and mentally debilitating and the compulsion for pills supersedes long-standing social relationships. One of the things with addiction is to isolate and to compartmentalize 
things. I'm going to tell my doctor this, and then I'm going to tell my therapist this, and then I'm going to tell my family this, and nobody can know the whole story. Because they have a brain disease. So it takes time, and everybody's different, as to when they say, I surrender. My way of living and thinking is not working. Addiction alters the chemistry of the brain, convoluting reality and obscuring rational decisions. At this point, we have a nationwide crisis on our hands, and Milwaukee is no exception to the trends. Opioids are ravaging our city. So the most important question that remains is how can I help? You have to meet people where they're at. With this very goal, Community Medical Services opened its doors in 2019 as Wisconsin's first 24-7 opioid treatment center. People who overdose have a 92% chance that they're going to overdose again within two weeks. So we really want to get people when they realize that they need help and get them started in treatment. And a lot of people right after they overdose are scared and they're thinking and they're like, I'm willing to make a change. But in a few hours, they're going to be throwing up again and having diarrhea and feeling horrible. And then they're like, well, I just need not to be sick. If we can catch them in that time period, we can put them in a position where they can be successful. But even if an addict agrees to try treatment, getting clean is far from easy. The physical toll of addiction causes painful withdrawals. And after months or even years of opioid addiction, getting clean requires reworking the entire neurobiology of an addict. So no, it's not just a matter of willpower, or choosing not to use. It is a long and multi-layered journey, one that is nearly impossible without help, guidance, and support. Being addicted is not your fault. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Quitting, not continuing to try, that's, that's where you fall short. They feel um, the stigma associated with it, and I think breaking down those barriers and embracing and reaching out to people in recovery and talking with them and realizing it could, it could be anybody. They need to have a better life to go to. They need to have a relationship. And a lot of that comes from encouraging and positive comments. By walking along with someone and not judging them, but rather encouraging them, people do a lot better. You should just be their friend. Tell them you care and love them and that you are concerned and that you know there is help out there well, kindness i think and compassion are uh, underrated um, i think kindness transcends everything if you or a loved one are suffering from opioid misuse disorder understand that you are not alone there is a better life waiting for you the opioid epidemic is a multifaceted and life-threatening crisis, and it will not just work itself out. But through deliberate efforts at consciousness, compassion, and community, we can and we will get past this. So take a moment to think back to the scenic landscapes and the boisterous ball games. Then think to the pain and suffering of losing a loved one to opioids. Which Milwaukee will you work toward?